NATO partner nations have made it clear that they will not send troops to fight in Ukraine, which is facing full-blown Russian military strikes. However, that hasn't stopped them from chalking out a contingency plan to tackle a possible spill over of the crisis into Europe. Days after the Russian invasion began, the U.S. Air Force revealed that its F-35s flew over Eastern Europe and even carried out refueling flights in the area. On February 27, an F-35 stealth fighter flew from Germany's Spengdalem Air Base to southeastern Poland. The U.S. Air Force flew two F-35s and a KC Stratotanker in the airspace a day later, Business Insider reported. The track of the F-35 shows that the aircraft operated close to the border with Ukraine, possibly pointing its ESM, electronic support measure, sensors at the Russian forces in Ukraine or Belarus, or simply flying an armed patrol as many of the other NATO aircraft are doing these days, the report said. On March 4, NATO rejected Ukraine's calls for help to protect its skies from Russian warplanes but promised more sanctions to punish Russian President Vladimir Putin. We are not part of this conflict, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg was quoted as saying by Reuters. We have a responsibility as NATO allies to prevent this war from escalating beyond Ukraine because that would be even more dangerous, more devastating and would cause even more human suffering, he said following a NATO meeting in Brussels. Ever since the possibility of a Russian invasion became imminent, NATO allies have mobilized their resources and stationed them in Eastern Europe. Ukraine shares a border with Poland, on NATO ally. Previously, at the height of Russian buildup along the Ukrainian border, a dozen F-35A fighter jets and 350 airmen from Hill Air Force Base in Utah had arrived in Germany. Later, six F-35 fighter jets from Germany's Spengdalem Air Base were dispatched to NATO's Eastern Front on February 22 and arrived in the Baltic and Black Sea regions on February 24 to reassure allies as Russian forces advanced into Ukraine. During a bomber task force operation in the Black Sea region, a B-52 from Minot Air Force Base, North Dakota, also flew with Polish fighters, according to Air Force magazine. F-35 took to skies in full stealth mode. A day after reports had first emerged about F-35 flying near Ukraine, U.S. Air Force F-35A fighter jets from Hill Air Force Base flew over Poland once more to support NATO's collective defense. Two Lightning II planes receive AAR, air-to-air -air refueling from a KC-135 Stratotanker of the 100th Air Refueling Wing operating out of Ramstein AB, Germany, according to photos published by the 86th Airlift Wing, Public Affairs. The photographs also reveal that the F-35s were missing the RCS, radar cross-section, enhancers and radar reflectors that are routinely deployed during peacetime operations, stated Business Insider. That would indicate that the F-35 was in its stealthiest configuration, which could be very notable. The significance of the breakthrough was explained by David Senchati of The Aviationist. The Lockheed Martin F-35 was designed to carry a variety of weapons. Its stealth capabilities make it a perfect platform for penetrating protected airspaces and knocking out defenses. It can accommodate 5,000 pounds of weapons and bombs inside even in this mode. The F-35 can carry 5,700 pounds of internal cargo in stealth mode, and 22,000 pounds of air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missiles in beast mode. This is perhaps the first time U.S. or allied F-35s were seen flying near hostile airspace without radar reflectors, according to national interest. F-35 stealth fighters are the U.S. military's prized possession. Besides the U.S., some NATO members as well as a few of America's allies use this fifth-generation combat jet. Even though NATO has not sent any F-35 fighter jet to Ukraine for assistance or as aid, it is preparing for any contingency. Military assistance to Ukraine. While the war in Ukraine rages on, governments from all over the world have given military assistance to the Ukrainian government in its struggle against Russia's invasion. In an unprecedented decision, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen stated that the EU would fund a total of 450 million euros in weaponry purchases and deliveries to Ukraine. Germany will provide 1,000 anti-tank rocket launchers, 500 Stinger surface-to-air missiles, 9 howitzers, 14 armored vehicles, and 10,000 tons of fuel to Ukraine, breaking its long-standing foreign policy of prohibiting any transfers of lethal weapons to conflict zones.
Sweden also announced that it would provide anti-tank weapons to Kyiv. For its part, France has pledged defense equipment and fuel support. Belgium and the Netherlands will also contribute weapons and protective gear, with Brussels committing 2,000 machine guns, 3,800 tons of gasoline, 3,000 more automatic rifles, and 200 anti-tank weapons, among other things. Portugal, the Czech Republic, and Romania are sending military equipment to Ukraine's defense as well. Bulletproof jackets and helmets, as well as night vision goggles, grenades, and ammunition of various calibers, have been offered by Portugal. A total of 30,000 handguns, 7,000 assault rifles, 3,000 machine guns, and several dozen sniper rifles, as well as 1 million rounds of ammunition, are being sent from the Czech Republic. Fuel, body armor, helmets, ammo, and other military equipment are being supplied by Romania. In an extraordinary action, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken unveiled a new €350 million Euros military aid package for Ukraine, boosting Washington's total military funding to Ukraine to roughly €1 billion Euros over the past year. Ukraine has specifically requested Javelin anti-tank missiles, which will be included in the shipment, according to U.S. President Joe Biden. Finally, Canada announced the delivery of military protection gear, including helmets and bulletproof vests, as well as anti-tank weaponry systems and enhanced ammunition.